Today on The Joy of Editing, we'll learn how to blend two images into one using Photoshop's Generative Fill. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, we'll learn how to merge two separate images into one image. And I have two different examples for you. Plus, I have some good news for you concerning Generative Fill credits. I was checking out Tony Kuyper's blog the other day. And by the way, if you don't get Tony Kuyper's blog, The Good Late Journal, I'll have a link for that directly below in the description. But in this blog, I was reading about the new TK Gen Fill update version 1.4.0, which is absolutely free for you. I'll have links for you in the description below where you can pick that up as well. And But there was a note here. It says, note for a limited time creative cloud Adobe Firefly, Adobe Express, and Adobe Stock paid subscribers won't be subject to generative credit limits. To learn when credit limits will apply, check back here after January 1st, 2024. So that's good news. We have up till January 1st, at least, to not have to have credit. So that's good information for us. So we can keep practicing, keep experimenting. Now is the time to really learn how to use generative fill. And by all means, pick up the new TK Gen Fill panel. It'll make your Gen Fill experience so much better. There's a link here to a video that I've just published recently on YouTube, which talks about the new feature inside of uh, TK Gen Fill, and that's inspiration. Check it out. It's really, really cool. Now, there's another blog post here. Rethinking Generative Fill is Generative Blend, and that's what brought about this video. I read through this blog post here. And it gave me an idea for a video. Tony had a photograph where the sun was further away from this lighthouse where he brought it closer. And he explains how he did it and some issues you could have if you don't do this right. So I recommend that you read this post and watch this video where I take two images and combine those into one, which is similar to what Tony is doing right here. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, for my first example, now this image is an Adobe stock image, which is a really wide pano image. But basically what I did was cut it down into two separate images, as you can see here, right here, and also right here. Now this pano is really nice, but this could have been two shots. Like this could have been a shot right here and another shot right here for the boat. But you notice how far away the sun is to the left of the boat. I would like to have this sun up in this area right in here, and we can do that. And this is a new possibility in Photoshop with generative fill for compositing two images shot at the same time of the day in the same location, but maybe bringing the scene a little bit closer together with the help and the aid of Photoshop and generative fill. So let's just pretend that this was two separate images, which it probably was and was combined and merged together into a pano. All right, then here's the image of the boat. Here's the image of the sun. So what we can do is take this sun image, get your move tool. You can type V to get the move tool. Click on the image and drag up onto the boat image. Hold your shift key down and then release the left click of your mouse and it'll pop that image right on top of the other image. And now what I want to do is I want to figure out how much of this sun do I want in my image composite. Now I want to cut out the sun in this image. In other words, more than just the sun, but the whole, a whole area where the sun is sitting here. To do that, I'm going to use a marquee tool. Now, here's a tip. If you type M, you'll get your marquee tool. But if you're not getting your rectangular marquee tool, hold your shift key down and type M because look right here. See, that's a rectangular marquee. If you hold your shift and type M, now it's elliptical. Shift and M again now it goes to the rectangular. So if you want to toggle between your tools, always hold your shift and then type the shortcut for the tool. And that works for pretty much, I'm pretty sure, any tool. But that's a good one to remember. What I want to do is I'm going to go right about here. I think I want to start here. I'm just left clicking with my mouse and dragging. And I think I want to come over to maybe right about here. Now that's selected right there. Now I want you to notice something. You see the crosshatch right there. If I come inside of the selection, see that little arrow there? I can actually come and move this to the left or right. 
up or down whatever I want to so you can reposition it if you didn't get it quite right and again I think I'm gonna go to right there now what I want to do is take this and cut this out onto a new layer and to do that hold your command or control key down and type your letter J that'll copy that and put it on its own layer and now I could come to this layer either shut the eye off and just not see it or I can delete it I don't really need it anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it I'm gonna use my combo panel and click on this trash can and it is gone but now what do I do with this okay it's not in the right position yet but let me show you what we do next I want to move this to the left so I'm gonna use my move tool and the shortcut is V for the move tool and what I want to do is just drag it over and I really need to drag it over pretty far to maybe somewhere right around this area. Now, here's a little tip for you. You're like, hey, Dave, you've lost the sun. Yeah, I've lost the sun, but we can get it back. Check it out. Here's a tip for you. Come up here to image and come down and click on reveal all. And just like magic, everything is displayed. Isn't that cool? And now what I can do is I'm gonna type my letter C for the crop tool. And maybe what I'll do is I'll crop this image in a little bit now I'm just on ratio and I have no figures typed in here so it's basically a freeform crop and so what I might also do is just pull this side in just a little bit like that and now that's my image but as you can see we have to do some Photoshop generative fill magic here to make this blend right okay so that's my crop I'm gonna click on this check to accept that crop and now it's time for some generative fill now for generative fill, you can come up here to window and make sure you have your contextual taskbar open by clicking right here. I'm not gonna use that, so I'm gonna shut that off because I'm using the uh, TK Gen fill panel. That's all I ever use now. Since uh, I've downloaded TK Gen fill, I love it so much. But everything I can do here, I can do here, but I can do so much more with TK Gen fill. So I'm gonna go back to window and shut off my contextual taskbar because it just gets in my way, but you could use it. Now, I still have my crop tool, so I will type M to grab my marquee tool again. Now we need to join these two images, and Tony Kuiper points out in his blog post, if you don't make this selection area between the two images wide enough, it's not going to do a good job for you because you're not giving Gen Phil enough room to kind of figure this out. And a lot of times what you'll get, you'll just see another straight line coming down here where these two images are. You can experiment with that, but you gotta have enough margin here for Gen Field to work. So let me go ahead and what I think I wanna do is I wanna click about right in this area right here and come over to about here. See how this kind of winds around here. But what I'm going to also do, I think I'll have a little bit of a issue with the transition up here in the sky. So I'm gonna hold my shift key down and you'll notice my marquee tool gets a little plus on it. So what I'm going to do is just add to this area right here, maybe somewhere right down to about here. And now I have like a half of a T here, you see that? Now let's generate that and see what kind of result we get. I'm just gonna click on generate on my TK Gen fill panel. And wow, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Now there's my first result. Now remember, you always get three. And on the Gen Fill panel, you have this toggle left or right. So let's go to the second result. So I'll click right on this arrow. There's the second result. That one's good too. And here is my third result. And I like them all. Let me go back to the first result. And I think I like that one the best. So pretty cool, right? So now I have the boat and I have the sun closer to the boat. And this to me looks really realistic across here. Now at this point, I could save this image out as a PSD file with all the layers intact, or I could use this button on the TK Gen fill panel just to flatten the image. And then I could go ahead and save it out and make prints, put it online for social media or whatever I wanted to. But now let's go on to our next example. And this is example two it's another stock image it was another pano that i cut in half now this pano was probably two images that were merged together and here's an image right here and here's a second image here but you know what instead of a pano say you're out in the field and you shot the fence like this image here and then you shot the windmill here but let's say you want this windmill not so far away here so i would like to have this windmill sitting right about here and we can do that 
Now I'm going to go to this file right here, example number two. Now, just like in the first image, I had two separate files and then I held my shift key down and used the move tool and drug the windmill on top of the fence. As you can see, here's the windmill, here's the fence and the windmill is sitting right on top of the fence. And just to save time, I'm not going to duplicate that process again. You can go back to watch the first part of the video where I pulled the one file on top of the other file using the shift key and the move tool. And now, just like I did in the other image, I'm going to grab my marquee tool, type M to get your marquee tool, and decide what I want to add to that fence. And I think what I want to do is grab this area right here. Maybe over to say here. And then I'll just do a command or control J and put that on a separate layer. And now I can come back to this layer and either shut it off or delete it. In this case, I think I'll just use my trash can on my TK Gen fill panel and delete that. And now what we'll do is I'm going to grab my move tool. So type V to get your move tool. And let's kind of put this into position here. Now here's a little trick. If you hold your shift key down, you'll constrain this and it'll move just right over like that. And let's say I want my windmill to be sitting right about in this area right here. Now we don't see the windmill anymore, but remember my little trick, come up here to image and click reveal all. And now there you can see there's my windmill and that's exactly how I want it. Now I'm going to grab my crop tool. So type C for the crop tool. And again, I'm on ratio. I have no figures in here, so it's just a free form crop. So I'm going to take the left side and drag it into maybe somewhere right about here. And I like the right side just the way it is. I could crop down from the top a little bit if I wanted to, and I might just do that. Maybe something like that I think is pretty good. And now we can click on the check to accept that crop. And now let's try to blend these two images in together here. And here's something else we can do with the move tool. I'm going to type V to get the move tool again. And I'm just going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to tap down with the down arrow key and kind of line this up to right about here. Now I have that space up here, but we'll take care of that. Don't worry. So let's use our marquee tool again. I'll type M. That's the shortcut for the marquee tool. And I think what we'll do is go right like this. And I don't want to go that far over. I just want to go right to the edge right here. There's some kind of a building right there. So I think I'm going to go to about right here like that. This area that we're missing up here, hold your shift key down and we can add to that selection like so right there. And I'm missing some down here so I can hold my shift key. I don't know what happened there, but we can go ahead and add to that by going like that. And now that's all selected. And now we can go ahead and try the blend. You can use the contextual taskbar, but I'll just use generate here on my TK Gen fill panel. They'll both do the same thing and we'll see what we get. All right. That looks pretty good. Let's try the next version. So I'll click the right arrow. I like that one. I think that one looks really nice. And let's try the third version. And I think I do like the third version. Let's go to the second again. Okay. No, you know what? I think I'm going to go with the second version. I think that looks cool. But isn't that nice with that windmill right there closer to the scene? And everything just blends in really nicely in here. Now, if there's anything you don't like, see right here. If I shut this off, it added that little spire right there probably from some building back here a church or something probably wouldn't have two churches back there so what i can do is put a blank pixel layer above there so you can just click this button right here adds a blank pixel layer and grab your remove tool i love the remove tool and we can just paint over that like that and it goes away so that's pretty cool any other things here you don't like you can use the remove tool and get rid of them but i'm really happy with this and then once you're totally satisfied with everything, you can go ahead and save this out with all your layers intact, or you could just go ahead and flatten it. And in my case, I'm just going to click this button on the gen fill panel and that flattens my image. So there you go. That's another example. Oh, by the way, I went ahead and zoomed into the image and you see right here, the way this transitions from here over to here doesn't look quite right. So what I'm going to do is see if I can fix that. 
And I'm going to use a handy little tool here on the TK Gen fill panel, and that's the brush tool. So when you click on it, it activates the brush tool. It's at 100%. You can change the value here, but here we're going to leave it at 100%. And what I'm going to do is just paint on this area, like right in here, over to about here. And let's go ahead and click generate and see if I can fix that. And here's my result. Yeah, that looks a lot better right there. Let's try another variation. Here's another variation. That one looks good too. And here's another variation. Well, I'll tell you what, I think this one looks about the best. I think I'm going to go with this one. Let me shut this off. Yeah, add a little bit to the fence here, but I think that really helps it. And now I can click this flatten button again. And now I'm going to click this button on my TK combo panel to go back to fit the screen. So there we go. Don't forget to zoom in and really check it out and make sure everything's right because you can always use GenFill again to fix an area. Next time you're out shooting uh, and you find another element that you'd like to add to the scene, go ahead and take a shot of that element as well and use this method to go ahead and blend the two shots together, which could really give you a nice, interesting image. You know, take that average image and turn it into a great image you know all with the aid of gen fill now some of you out there will not want to do that because it alters the scene too much but if you're so inclined to do that then gen fill could become your new best friend and it really helps you to composite images much easier in photoshop well there it is everyone i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial if you did please give it a like share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all to receive all notifications. And that way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.